filled with that. Here's Larry on his knees right in front of Jesus. And he's like, oh, i got to do something. Now, he could have just went, all right, you're unclean, but boom. <laughs> you. <laughs> Stay away. Oh, you're dirty. No. It says next, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. And I think he took his head, his face in his hands, and he just he looked down and said, I am willing. Be clean. And it says immediately, the leprosy left him and he was clean. He was completely different. Sometimes people feel worth a lot, and other times people feel worth nothing. Uh, Larry uh, was known by everybody to, to be a guy that had all of his all of his crap just out there for everybody to see. He was he was alone a lot. Zacchaeus had all the all the money, all the all the stuff. And I want you guys to know. Uh, I'm gonna, I want to tell you about your worth, and I want to help you understand. By anybody ever knows what this is, right? It's a Benjamin, right? All right, Benjamin, so, or a one hundred dollar bill. Uh, and here's the deal. All this is is ink and paper and a little bit of cotton threads and a security ribbon now, right? That's all it is. Does it cost any more to make a $100 bill than it does a $20 bill or a $50 bill or a $10 bill or a $5 bill? Nope, it doesn't. It's this guy pushed a button and, and, it, and they cut them up. But here's the deal. Why is this worth $100? Why? The because the government says so. Nope. Not Obama either. Okay. And this, isn't, this isn't a government deal. Here it is. This is incredible to me. The reason this piece of paper is worth 100 and not worth 5 is because before this paper rolled through the press, a designer at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing was charged with uh, creating a new $100 bill. And so they were given uh, uh, license to make this, to take this Benjamin Franklin head and he's like, change this whole thing. So they took these metal plates and they started engraving and, and, they, and they scratched out the likeness of Ben Franklin. And the closer you look, the cooler it is. You look like this, it's like, oh, it's a, it's a photo or a picture or a drawing of Ben Franklin. And then as you get closer and closer, you see the detail. And it's all little, little lines and marks and checks, and it's so cool. And then you, and you see the one and the zero, zero, and all the little borders are just intricate and very cool. And you flip it over on the back side, and you're like, oh, that's Independence Hall. And the closer you look, you see it's 1030 on the clock. And then you see uh, William Penn's statue in front of it. And, it just, the closer you look, the more magnificent it is. And somebody went through and etched on a piece of metal, every little piece of this. And they went one, zero, zero. And then it went to the machine and said, all right, make it happen. And the person that made the, made the, made the, uh, uh, the actual bill had nothing to do with what it would be. And friends, you need to hear this. You have worth, not because of the maker, but because of your designer. So different. Janie and I have two children who we love very much, Paige and Joel, but we had nothing to do with designing them. What, did they, would they have 10 fingers and 10 toes? Would they be tall or short? Would they, would they be, uh, love to laugh? Would they love, what, 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 who they are? The designer designed them. We were just given them as a gift. So you have to understand this. I don't have the right, as the maker, to tell them their worth. Only the designer does. And he says, they and you are worth more than all the world. In fact, God says this. What does it profit someone to gain the whole world and let, and yet, Lose your soul. He says, your soul, who you are, is worth more than the world. That's incredible. And listen to this. I have friends. We were driving north on I-5. 
My wife was driving, I was on my phone, and I saw this tweet come in. My mom just told me I am an accident. I immediately tweeted back. You may have been a surprise to your mother and your father, but the God of the universe knew the exact time, date, place, situation that you were going to be born in, and he was thrilled. He was overjoyed. He was so excited. Friends, there are no accidents. None of you, none of us are accidents. We may have been a surprise to our mom and dad, but the God of the universe knew every little detail about you and was thrilled, thrilled that you were coming. I had another friend say, my dad told me he wishes I was never born, that I ruined his life. Friends, hear this. His dad does not have the right to do that. He is not the designer. He had no, he had no place to say any of that to his son. Girls, you are wonderful and beautiful. Because God says so. Not because some ad campaign says you need this or need that, or this is going to make you finally happy. Oh, no. Your designer says you are beautiful. And I love you very, very much. Guys, you don't have to do something or create something or get to a point in life and say, now I've made it. Now I'm somebody. Because you are here, your heart is beating. You are somebody, and God of the universe loves you. Don't lead tonight without understanding that little fact that is so incredibly important. And I know if you're anything like me, this is what you're doing. Oh, he's talking to somebody else. Oh, he means them, not me. Friends, I mean you, and I mean me. For me to understand, anytime that I get to a point where I understand that God of the universe really loves a dork like me, a jacked up fool like me, who, who would love me? And I hear the little whisper of God in my ear, I love you. Oh, I come undone. <laughs> me? Who am I? And he says, you are my son. I love you. Friends, if you're hearing that voice saying, oh, he's not talking to you, squash it. I'm talking to you. I'm talking directly to you. You are love. You are love. You are love. The God of the universe loves you greatly. Don't miss that fact. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you made us for a relationship. You made us to be in a relationship with you. The perfect Heavenly Father that we all desire, that we all dream to have. Father, I pray as we go to Cabin Time that we'd be real. Some of us for the first time because we decided to check out last night. But Lord, I pray that tonight might be the first time we're real with ourselves, with others in our cabin, and most of all, God, that we'd be real with you. That potentially, that this cabin time might be life-changing for us. That our lives would be forever changed because of what we heard tonight. Be with us as we go. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, good luck.